بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها عوجا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam firstly to all of you السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this half an hour that I've got before the actual Jummah Salah I'd like to remind myself and you that our home is not this place our home is not this place because our fathers, 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 grandfathers, great-grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers, fathers, fathers, father, who was Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, his home was Jannah. He left Jannah and he was sent out of Jannah to an alien world that he was not accustomed to. He was sent out because of a mistake that he did. And his wife, our mothers, 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 great mother, grandmothers, mothers, mothers, mother, Hawa alayhi salam, a mistake that she made. Because of that mistake, they were to be banished from that place and sent to an alien land. One that is uncomfortable for them. One that they would have to struggle in. One that they would have to find a lot of challenges in. This was the name of dunya. So where you are, my friend, right now, if you have made it your home and you are happy with this home, the Quran says, bil dunya biha." If you've made this home and you're really pleased with this place, more than the akhirah, more than the next world, then you have made a massive mistake, a huge mistake. Allah Azza wa Jal says that these people, who make this the goal of their whole life, this world. Your luxury is that you've just left at home. The aircon that you have there, the wonderful carpets that you have in your houses, the decorations you have created, the soft sofa, leather sofas that you have at home, and the meals that you cook and the fridges that you fill up for the next days and the next week's meal. This is not home. Because this place has been created for us to be tested. You will never find this a perfect place. And there are people out there who say, why don't I get this? Why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't God do that? Why doesn't it change this? Why have you got difficulties here? Well, my friend, you haven't understood the reason why you're here. You're in an alien land and Allah Azza wa Jal has put you, me and all our forefathers here for one reason that he's going to test and see amala, to see which one of us is going to come out with the best of actions. Sometimes he will test it with the heat and sometimes with the cold. Sometimes with poverty and sometimes with richness. Sometimes he will make us be tested with a good relationship and sometimes with a bad relationship. And the whole idea is to see which one of us comes out with the things Allah has told us to do. And that's the whole test. So as you are now sitting here for Juma, I want you to understand that no man sitting here, no woman sitting here will take a single thing from this world. You won't take it with you. No man in the history of this world has ever been able to take a single rand from this world and take it to the next world and put it in the investment. Allah Azza wa has said in the Holy Quran, He has said, يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم أو you who believe spend from the things that we have given to you من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة 
before a day comes when there's going to be no more commerce and no more trade, no more business and nothing to return, before a day comes when you will find that no one will be able to take anything with money, before a day comes that you won't be able to buy yourself out of trouble, before a day comes, لا خلة ولا شفاعة, you will not have any friendship on that day. You will not have anyone who will bail you out on that day. You will not have anyone who will intercede for you on that day. لا بيعون, there's no commerce and trade. There's no more buying, there's no more bartering, there's no more selling, there's no more getting and making a profit out of it. ولا خلة, there's no friendship, there's no connections, there's no bribes, there's nothing that you can give. There's no one to come to your rescue on that day. ولا شفاعة, not even to beg in front of Allah unless Allah gives them the permission. This is the day of judgment. Now before we get to the day of judgment, subhanallah, Allah has told us prepare for that world. So what I'm going to do here is to tell us how we can make it easy for ourselves to be prepared for the next world. And as you sit here, brothers and sisters, some of you are sitting here and thinking, okay, we'll listen to it. But if it's a bit too long, then we may not be able to do it. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You know when South Africa had its World Cup, you remember when South Africa had its World Cup? You guys remember, you don't remember. Are you all saying Toba astaghfirullah right now? Huh? When South Africa had its World Cup, and we saw you guys flocking to those stadiums and to the football centers and so on, and some of you had to remain home and you had to watch their football from home. Okay? Subhanallah al azim we have a very big mentality, difference in mentality. When that football comes, and especially came to your country, all of you were gripped by, all, by, by, by what was happening. And every minute of it was worth sitting there in front of the TV watching it. Huh? Every time when the game went to 90 minutes or 90 minutes or 90 minutes only, then it went to extra time. You sat for the extra time. And then after that, you sat for the, extra, the, the, the penalty shootouts. If they had any, you sat for that too. And then there was a conversation that happens after that about the whole football team. So a dedication. This is just South Africa in the World Cup. I've heard... That, that you guys in South Africa, you support our football soccer teams more than we support them. You are more crazy for the Arsenal and the Tottenham's and the Liverpool's and the, and the different team Chelsea's that are playing over there in the UK. But you're here and you will religiously follow them. Yet the same person when the Imam will take two minutes extra in Salah of Isha. So I did this once in my local masjid. I led the Salah of Isha. Instead of it finishing in, let's say, 10 minutes of Isha, I took 12 minutes. Astaghfirullah. It was a big crime I did. A brother who was an Arab who was behind us, he stood up and he straight after the Salah, he stood up and he said, Allah, Taraweeh? He said, what is this? This is like Taraweeh. I only went from 10 minutes to 12 minutes. It was two minutes extra. Astaghfirullah, I really apologize to you. If I have to apologize to the entire crowd that the Salah went two minutes over, so therefore there has to be a complaint. But when the football goes on to 90 minutes to 120 minutes, there is no complaint whatsoever. In fact, when you sit with your phone and you're going through your apps, there is a whole tawaf that is going around. There's a tawaf. You know, tawaf is of seven different rounds that you make. So people make seven different, on the, different rounds on the phones. It will start from the text messages. Moving on to the emails, moving on to the third round, which is WhatsApp, moving on to the fourth round, which is Instagram, moving on to the fifth round, which is Facebook, moving on to the sixth one, which is Twitter, and moving to the seventh one, which is going to be the emails or something else that they're going to do. So they make seven, and then they come back to the first one. My brothers and sisters, let's be honest. Some of us open our phones of WhatsApp, like every 20 minutes, 10 minutes, we're opening them. And when you're on there, no person ever says there's a time limit for my WhatsApp. After two minutes, I have to get off from WhatsApp. I've never met one person in my life who will do that. And when you get onto Facebook and the videos are coming in, you're watching them one after the other, one after the other. And they're very clever, huh? They know what your, what your liking is. So when you watch one video, they know which video to give you next. If you're watching the ones with car driving, they'll give you faster 
cars to look at. If you're looking at the sales, they'll give you sales to look at. So what they'll do is they'll keep you busy. When you go to YouTube, again, they recommended YouTube videos are given to you one after the other to keep you busy. I've never heard a person say to me that I've, wallah, I've just spent two hours on the different videos and I've two hours ago. No, because it's the time that you enjoy. So tell me, when I was to say to you, if I was to say to you right now, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said to us that if you do the next thing which will take you 90 seconds, literally 90 seconds for you to do every morning and 90 seconds in the evening, you have to be constant. About 90 seconds in the morning, one and a half minutes. And 90 seconds in the evening, one and a half minutes. Three minutes altogether. Which one of you does not have the time to do that? Put your hands up. Imam, are you watching this here? So which one of you has the time to do it? Put your hands up right now. Man, if, you got, if you're going to do what I'm trying to say, you can put, put your hands. I tell you, okay, put your hands up. Let me give you the benefit first. Then maybe more hands will go up. He said, if you do this next thing and you repeat these words, then when you come on the day of judgment, there will be no one that will have more reward than you except if they did the same action or they did the same action and more action above that, they will have more reward than you. Otherwise, you are guaranteed to come on the day of judgment with the most reward on the day of judgment. Who now is ready to put the three minutes a day to do this? Put your hands up. Your yeah, ma'am, we're getting some, you know... I think we need to, we need to, we, we need something different here, huh? What's that thing you said? We need to feed them some, uh, is it that kusista? <laughs> Maybe that will get the sugar levels high. At the moment, they're feeling a little bit dead. The Prophet ﷺ has said, whoever will say, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, say the words. Subhanallah wa bihamdi 100 times in the morning, 100 times in the evening. Nobody will come on the day of judgment with more actions than what you have. 90 seconds in the morning I ask you and 90 seconds in the evening and you have got that and there are many ahadiths like this. I'll give you another one that will be, that will be precious for you. We sit here and we dream of the different cars that we've got and the different apartments we want to buy. I remember driving my, driving my child to school in the UK. Early in the morning, the traffic is going, and he sees a Bugatti. You have that, you have that car here, the Bugatti? Yes, guys, you know what the Bugatti is? Yes, you know that? So he said, Dad, 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 there's a Bugatti, there's a Bugatti. I said, I've got more than that. He said, no, you haven't. I said, I got more than that. He said, no, you haven't. He said, you drive a VW Skoda. You don't have no Bugatti. You know how much that is worth? I said, look, I can buy you that. He said, you can buy me a Bugatti? I said, yeah, I'll go down the shop and I'll get you a baguette. <laughs> he said, no, dad, stop pulling my leg. This is a Bugatti. It's a very expensive car. I said, I've got more than that. He said, how? I said, I'll prove it to you. I said, Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us whoever will say these words, Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar. Whoever will say these words and Allah has already given them more than whatever the sun has risen over. My son, right now, by saying Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. I have more than the Bugattis in the world. I have more than all the Ferraris in the world. I have more than all the Lamborghinis put together in the world. I have more than all the Porsches together in the world. I have more than all the jewelry shops in the whole of the world. I have more than the skyscrapers in the whole of the world. I have more than what Manhattan has in New York. I have more than what Dubai, the Dubai malls have in the whole of UAE. I have more than everything they can put together. I have more than what the kings have. I have more than what the princes have. I have more than the gold that the, all the gold the women have put together in the whole of the world. I have more than the diamonds that are secretly buried in the ground yet to be discovered. I have more than the pearls of the ocean. I have more than the whole diamonds collected together. I have more than the houses that are there. I have more than the apartments. I have more than the beautiful apartments that people cannot buy and they want to look at as lavish apartments. I have more than that by simply saying once, Subhanallah, 
ilaha illallah wallahu akbar and if you want to add to it wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-aliyy al-azim what do you get for wala hawla wala quwwata illa billahi al-aliyy al-azim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us once la hawla wala quwwata illa billah is one way of getting that one of the treasure boxes in jannah if i said to you and i was serious about it and if i said if you do this thing within 3 seconds of your life then i'm going to give you a gift box of emeralds diamonds rubies sapphire gold silver all the different kinds of jewels that they would want to have if i gave you a whole box or a treasure box of that which one of us would not take that but yet we're in this world and allah is testing us and he wants to see which one of us will do it until death because once death comes you can't add to your account any of this you must say before your death and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given these these ways for us to earn that in the next world in fact i'm going to tell you subhanallah I'm going to tell you one beautiful way of going through then from this world to the next world right into jannah if you can do the next simple things. So one is that you've got to try and say what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us if your last words on this earth are la ilaha illallah then you enter jannah. If your last words are say it La ilaha illallah then you enter jannah and I'm going to give you a simple way of getting that into your system Every time you see anything that shocks you anything that gives you a jitter anything that makes you troublesome anything that gives you a kind of difficulty or a stress straight away say la ilaha illallah Any time you find that something dropped accidentally just say la ilaha illallah because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on sunnah was when he was in fear he used to say la ilaha illallah and if you say that one moment in your life is going to be the moment that you were in shock and your system was that you trained it to say la ilaha illallah the moment you're shocked you're in a car and the other car is coming straight in front you got no time to react a split second you say la ilaha illallah boom you passed away but you have gone away with the ticket to jannah And the next thing is you're going to now be buried in the grave. And people have got worries to be buried in the grave. How am I going to be buried? Subhanallah the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us one thing that if you do this it will only take you 2 to 3 minutes a night. 2 to 3 minutes a night. Who has the time to do this? Put your hands up. Imam, you better start getting the different uh, telling you. You know, I only see maybe a quarter of the people putting their hands up. You know they're like, uh, maybe, huh? Eh? maybe maybe after i uh, sit with my wife for so long huh after i have all the fruits and the melon and of course you guys love your meat and your biryani and your braai and the rest of it maybe after all of that after i'm burping huh maybe after that i might say a uh, quick alhamdulillah somewhere but i don't have 2 3 2 three minutes a night 2 to 3 minutes a night you know what you're guaranteed you're guaranteed a time in the grave where no animal no danger no fire no snake no scorpion no danger no hellfire no smoke of hellfire can even reach you all you need to do is read surah mulk every single night تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا تبارك الذي بيده الملك exalted is the one in whose hands he has the whole dominion وهو على كل شيء قدير and he has power over everything الذي خلق الموت والحياة the one who created death and life ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا so that he can test to see which one of you will come with the best of actions you're reminding yourself of who is in charge you recite surah mulk every night when you're dead you're in the grave man you're going to be in there like one of your beaches in cape town You understand a beach in Cape Town 
where you're lying down in a private beach, not a public beach, because the public beach, they might come and take all your stuff before you come out the water. I know you've got to think about these things before you go to the public beach, but a private beach that is secure, okay? And you're there, lying down, yeah? Nothing's going to come to you because your guards are there, the people are protecting you, the Surah Mulk will protect you in the grave when you're in the grave. So that's your grave sorted out. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that on the day of judgment when you bring your head up, then you want to be with the celebrities on the day of judgment. Everyone loves celebrities. Allahu Akbar. These are celebrities that we know, whether they're film stars, whether they're politicians, whether they're someone that is great in business, one of the biggest businessmen here that is sitting here right now, will be someone that will be known to the local people and local people will be nice to him. Because when you're close to a businessman or a person with power, with money, when you're close to a president, when you're close to someone who is highly well known and they give you a good thumbs up, then you know that you're going to also be given credit by everybody else. So you want to be with the celebrities. And at that moment on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal has selected already from now that his celebrities on the day of judgment are not the ones that you find on Facebook okay for references sake are not the ones that get likes people are crazy for likes if I get this this many likes that many likes my friend I want to tell you one thing if you have all the likes of the world but you missed out on the like from Allah then you are nothing you are zero and if you got no likes on this earth, but you got that one like from Allah, then you are everything. So you better remember that. These are celebrities never been on the social media, never been seen on magazines, never been seen on black billboard adverts, never been seen in the way that we operate in this world. But yet they are the greatest celebrities that will be there on the day of judgment. Who are they? Who are they? من أرسل نوحا إلا الله من نجى موسى إلا الله من رافع عيسى إلا الله من ناجي محمد إلا الله who was the one who rescued نوح عليه السلام except except Allah who was the one who spoke secretly to موسى except Allah, who was the one who saved Ibrahim from the fire, except Allah, who was the one who hid Muhammad in the cave, except Allah, who was the one who lifted Isa alayhi salam to the heavens, except Allah, who was the one who protected all his prophets, except Allah, who was the one who loves them from the beginning of time till the end of time, it is Allah, and Allah on the day of judgment will raise all of these prophets, Nuh alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, Hud alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Yunus alayhi salam, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of them as brothers under one canopy, and that canopy will be the arsh of Allah, it will be the throne of Allah. Yawma la dhilla illa dhillu, the day when there is no other shade except for the one shade Allah has created, that's the shade of his throne under there, all of these celebrities will be sitting down, they'll be dining, they'll be having gifts that Allah has given them, and only the people that have been close to them in terms of full if, in terms of following their footsteps only the first people who had obedience of Allah and obedience of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam only those people will be with them on the day of judgment and on the day of judgment when Allah will open the accounts they will be the celebrities who will make intercession for the people of their ummah and on the day of judgment when they will make their way to jannah they will be the first people to go to jannah la khawfun alayhim wa hum yahzanun they will have no fear they will have nothing to grieve about and all the people Allah will bless will go with them to Jannah and until they haven't entered Jannah, Jannah is not going to be happy and right behind them will be the people who will have worked their lives according to these celebrities. So you can go there and look at your screens and find all the celebrities you want today because these are the celebrities of today but not the celebrities of tomorrow. The celebrities of tomorrow, Allah has said, الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The ones that you, O oh God, have favored upon them, they have left the world. They left behind them 
books, Quran, Sunnah. They left the code book. If you follow that, you will join them. If you want to make them your Habib and you want to make them your beloved, then the Prophet Sallallahu said, do one of these, these things and you will, end, uh, you will end, up, end up under there. And what is that? Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that the person who is a leader and who is in, who's a just, just, a leader with justice. You people of South Africa, Allah will give you leadership in many ways. You have justice with the people under you. You are number one, one of the people under the arsh of Allah, under the throne of Allah, with the celebrities on the day of judgment to be there for your way to Jannah. Number two, my young brothers, my young sisters. You have a difficult time today to show your Islam, to stay on Islam. I understand the world wants you. The young boys and girls are in everything. Drugs is calling you. If you're not caught in drugs, then you are caught in girlfriend and boyfriend relationships. If you're not caught in that, then you're a young man, young woman, young blood. You're in college, you're in university, you can do what you like. You are young, you're agile. You move faster than any other person around you. You are smart, you're intelligent. Even when a person like me with a white beard has a new smartphone, I have to go to a youngster and say, hey, do you know how to make this happen on my phone? Makes me look a bit old, makes you look young, makes me look dumb, makes you look smart. But what you don't understand is that as a young person, if you actually put your efforts towards the religion at a young age, you grow that beard, you put that hijab on, you come to the deen, you practice your Islam, and all the other youngsters were going away from Islam, you came to Islam. Allah Azza wa Jalla, his messenger has said, you as a youngster will be picked up on the day of judgment, I will be brought under kawthar, uh, under, under the arsh, and Allah Azza wa Jalla, his messenger will give you a drink of kawthar into your hands. That drink, my friend, is going to be better than all your cold Coca-Cola. These young lot, they only know Pepsi, Coca-Cola. What drinks do you have here, Maulana? Yeah, Sprite, what else? Do you have a local one? What's a local one? Chaif? Chaif? What is that, man? Don't get me drunk on that one, yeah? <laughs> so you guys have these drinks. Kothar, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whiter than milk, sweeter than honey. But yet the best part is what he said after that. He said, whosoever will drink from this drink once, one sip will go down your throat, into your stomach. It has a special power. لا يَظْمَأُ بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا You can never, ever, ever, ever become thirsty ever again. Now you beat that, my friend, with your Coke and Sprite. Never get thirsty ever again with that drink. The third one, the Prophet has told us. He said, رَجُلٌ He said, a man. A man whose heart is attached to the masjid. Every time he leaves, he wants to come back. If you're that lucky man, you're under that th arsh and that throne on the day of judgment with the celebrities and you will embrace them, you will live with them, you will stay with them until you go with them to Jannah. The fourth one, you have Rajulan, two men or two women. They love each other for the sake of Allah. Now we have different people who love each other. Some people, you know, they say salam to you. Have you noticed people? Some people, they say salam to everyone, mashallah. And some people, they're very selective, huh? Who they give salam to. And some people, you know, they will only do salam to you if they, if they can get something off you. You understand? You know, the businessman. You, you understand what I'm trying to say, yeah? But some people, mashallah, they will love everyone for the sake of Allah. These are the people Allah will put on the day of judgment because you love them for the sake of Allah. And another one I want to tell you, my dear friend, subhanallah, it's not easy to do this. Whoever can do this, you have got a place under the throne of Allah. What is that? You are a man or you're a woman. You find a woman, if you're a man, you find a woman who calls you to the wrong act. She's very beautiful. She comes from a good lineage and she's very good looking. She's stunning. She takes your eyes away. She pulls your heart towards her and she says, let's do it. And you say, inni Allah. I fear Allah. If you're able to turn away and you're able to move away, woman or man, then Allah Azza wa Jal will guarantee your place under the throne on the day of judgment and you will rejoice with the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. And after that, he has said the man or the woman, basically extends to the woman. If you give sadaqah with your right hand that your left hand doesn't even know about it, meaning you give it secretly. It doesn't mean literally you go with your left hand behind and you give it with your right hand. Okay? You don't hide your hand behind your back. No, it doesn't mean that. It means you give it in secrecy. And your sadaqah is secret for the sake of Allah. 
Then you'll do it. And the seventh one is the most easiest one Allah has made for us. Some of you might think, well, I'm not in leadership, number one. Some of you will say, well, I'm beyond the youngsters. I'm old already. That's two. I, I, I can't go back and turn the clock. Number three, you're thinking that my heart attached to the masjid. I can't come here five times a day. I can't be, do that. Okay, that's gone. Number four, you're saying, well, I don't like everybody. You know, people give me problems. So I can't love for the sake of Allah. That's gone. Number five, man, I'm too ugly for any woman to want me. So forget a woman wanting me. I'm gone for that. Number six, I don't even have money, bro. I'm broke. I don't have money to give in sadaqah. So therefore, that's even gone. What's number seven? The man or the woman who will, who will remember Allah. ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتَ عَيْنًا they remember Allah just alone and they are talking just to Allah. And in their dua, they are becoming very pitiful for the things that they did. And tears start coming flowing down from their eyes because they've remembered Allah. Whosoever has remembered Allah like that and the tears have flowed from their eyes. Remember that you can take the whole of the Atlantic Ocean. You can take the Pacific Ocean. You can take the Indian Ocean. You can take the seven seas of the world and you can all take it together and and put it onto Jahannam, and Jahannam will not even have a spark that will be extinguished. But if a mu'min and a believer was to take one tear out of the fear of Allah to the next world, then that one tear can extinguish the whole of Jahannam for him. He will have nothing for him to worry in the next world. That is the easiest way to be in that company. Jazakumullah khair wa akhir da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.